So now continuing our look at animal homeostasis, we'll entitle the next flowchart animal homeostasis, and this is Roman numeral three here. And what we want to look at now uh, is we've established the different processes and what they often involve. They're often internal and they often involve exchange. But we want to now make it a little bit more specific, our understanding of animal homeostasis, by looking at two very distinct strategies to accomplish those processes previously mentioned. These two strategies will be as follows. So there are two strategies, I want to make sure I spell strategies right, two strategies uh, that's known as regulation, REG for short, and also conforming, uh, C-O-N-F for short, uh, and they are on a continuum. They're on a spectrum. And if you don't know what that means, just think of it like this. What we have is a, a line, okay? We have a strategy that will be on the regulation side, and we have a strategy that will be on the confirm, confirmation side, the conforming side. And homeostasis will involve some mechanisms that will be more so towards the reg side, and some that will be more so towards the confirmation side. The idea is that this is a continuum, meaning that some things will be in the middle, some things will be more to the left, more to the right, you get the idea. And that's what we mean by this continuum or spectrum process. Now, of course, we have to understand what does it mean to be a regulator or a conformer? Those are our two strategies, and that's what we'll focus on for the rest of the flowchart. Number one, let's look at what regulators are. So that's our first type of strategy. And then over here, we'll look at what a conformer is. Number two strategy would be a conformer. Okay, so in order to accomplish homeostasis, you are either are going to regulate or conform. That's what I'm trying to emphasize here. Uh, and as we're going through this whole flowchart, by the way, uh, be sure to look at figure 40.8. It's a good summative figure of this entire idea that we're trying to emphasize. A regulator is going to be one that's actually shown in figure 40.7. I want you to take a look. It's a really cool graph. And that figure in figure 40.7, you're going to see a temperature regulator. And we'll see what it means to be a temperature regulator. Just know that in that figure, the otter is the temperature regulator. And we'll see what that means in just a second. But when we talk about a regulator, what we're saying is the following. The basic definition here is that we're going to use internal mechanisms. Again, that makes sense, right? We're talking about homeostasis. It's often internal. Use internal mechanisms to control. I think that's the key word here. It's worth underlining. To control the internal environment. We are actively trying to ensure and control and maintain the internal environment using internal mechanisms. Uh, in addition, because of this, regulators will often be independent of the external environment. They don't care what's going on on the outside. They want to ensure the inside is controlled, highly regulated for that matter. And for this to happen, what we state is that regulators will accomplish and try to maintain, try to maintain, keep it at a steady state, right? Maintain different variables, and we're being very general here because there are many regulators, but maintain variables at or near, at or near a very specific value, okay? Uh, and by value, think of this like as body temperature, right? We don't want our temperature to go, uh, you know, to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, nor do we want it to go to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a very specific value range that we want to keep it at or near. That value range is basically going to be known as the set point. The set point is what we want to accomplish if we are looking at a regulatory homeostatic strategy. We want to maintain and achieve set point and how do we do this? What does this mean? It means that we want to keep whatever variable that we're talking about, keep it at uh, a specific, understood, well understood, normal range. Okay? What I said before, 80 degrees Fahrenheit versus 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that's way out of the normal body temperature range. Uh, and we keep it at this normal set point, this normal range, usually via negative feedback mechanisms. Uh, body temperature is a good example because if it gets too hot, what do we do? We sweat. Sweat is supposed to be evaporative cooling. That's going to be a negative feedback on the increased body temperature to hopefully decrease that body temperature back to its normal set point. And that's usually what we see in that exercise example that I mentioned earlier.
So take a look at figure 40.7, look at the temperature regulator, uh, that's the otter in that figure. Contrast that with the conformer in that figure. The conformer will also be seen in figure 40.7. It's a nice graph that shows two lines. The other line in figure 40.7 will be a fish, a fish in a lake, same lake as the otter. This is actually a temperature conformer, not a temperature regulator. Now, what does it mean to be a conformer? A conformer is going to be somebody who uses the strategy, it's a strategy that allows, okay, allows the internal environment, because remember that's where most homeostasis takes place, to vary. This is a big difference. You should be very clearly seeing something different. Control, maintain, at or near, set point, normal range. This is a different idea altogether. Allows internal environment to vary, to change, to be different with, coincidingly with, the external changes. So if it gets hot outside, or if it gets cold in the lake, the, the fish is going to uh, conform to that coldness. If it gets warm in the lake, the fish is going to conform to that warmness. What I want you to remember is that even though this is a continuum of regulator versus conformer, please, please, please do not think of homeostasis as being entirely regulator or entirely conformer. It's a continuum, meaning that there can be moments of processes that are in between. Understand that we're basically looking at a major sort of fluctuation. There's this whole process will fluctuate between uh, these two strategies. Homeostasis fluctuates, in other words, between conformer and regulator. We use a combo of both of these to achieve homeostasis. And that's a good overview of regulator and conformer. Uh, be sure to look at figure 40.7 to see two really cool distinct examples uh, of real organisms that do this. Uh, and we'll finish up on our last flow turn in the next video.